for bringing us together one more time. You indeed are a worthy savior. You do everything well. We don't have anything to complain about if we just trust in you. You are the creator of all things. You've created everything seen and unseen and you've created us and you've seen everything in us that we don't even know about. So we ask you to take charge tonight, get in our hearts, Lord God, help us to receive the word that we might be able to grow from the word and be a light to the world outside. We ask you, Lord God, to bless those who are going through in their bodies, sickness in their bodies. Bless those, Lord God, who are, are mourning the loss of loved ones. And just have your way today, Lord God. Let your perfect will be done again today as it has been, as it is in heaven. And keep us, Lord. Keep us, keep us, Lord God. Keep us humble. Keep us looking to you for everything. Let's, don't let us get caught up in what's going on around us. But let us understand and pay attention to what's going on in us. And we'll give you name, praise, glory, and honor. Guide us as we go through this tonight, as we go through your scriptures tonight, talking about faith and justification. Lord God, let us see how simple this life is if we just obey and do what you say. We thank you, praise you, and glorify you right now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. amen. All right, saints, so listen, I want you, I want, want you to keep your mics open in case you have uh, some conversations you want to you want to get in uh, and, you know, some comments and input, because this is, this is an important lesson that we're going to be going into tonight. And, you know, you know, the more you read this Bible and the more you hear the word preached, the more you gain, you know, there's just so much depth, there's higher heights and deeper depths. And the point I'm trying to make is that our salvation is so simple. Mm -hmm. I mean, so simple. All we have to do, Jesus did the work. All we have to do is do what he said do. Believe in him, believing in Jesus Christ. It means that we're exercising our faith in what he did for us. And that faith is what brings us to justification. And once we're justified, then we are sanctified. And there's nothing can touch us, saints of God. I mean, nothing. I mean, the world can do what he wants to. Anybody ever remember that little, that little nursery rhyme, the, uh, the huff and a puff? And it blew the house down. You know? Well, listen, we're built up on a on a solid rock. <laughs> so that fellow can blow all he wants, but he cannot shake us off of this foundation. All right, so we're going to go right into the scriptures. I want you to follow the word, see what the word is saying, and understand that this is this is confirming, confirming our place in Christ Jesus. And this is important now. Understand something. You I know, I know, and I know we see each other, we deal with things in the world, but we are born again of the water and of the spirit. And as a result, we have been translated from carnal to spiritual. And that's the Bible. And you can't hide it, but now accept it and let God work in us the way he wants to work in us. All right, here we go. Now, first one is Hebrews 11. And I want to go to Hebrews 11. And we know this. We've, 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 we've heard it. We've read it. And we understand that these things we've heard so many times, but I want you to really listen with that ear on the inside today. And the first verse, 11 and 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, it's the evidence of things not seen. This is, this is an important verse of scripture. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, okay? That simple verse means that if you have faith in what you're asking for, then your faith is going to bring that into, um, it's going to materialize, it's going to bring it into a substance. A substance is something that can you can handle. You know, substance is, is solid, you know, a solid liquid, something like that. So faith is going to make that prayer, that thing that you're desiring, is going to, faith, your faith in Christ Jesus is going to bring it to pass. That's what that scripture says. A lot of, some people like to use now faith, but it's not now faith. It's just everyday faith, <laughs> but it's just plain and simple faith by itself. All right. Faith. Well, we're going to find out faith needs something else too, but faith alone, this is what I'm talking about. It says now faith is the substance of things hoped for and faith is the evidence of things not seen. We don't see it. But we know it's coming. Why? Because we have faith in Jesus Christ. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, we accept that. That sounds crazy to somebody who doesn't know what we're doing. 
because you know, look, he made everything out of nothing. Does that make sense to the natural mind? No, it doesn't. But we understand that this is who God is and what God can do. Huh? Look, what one scripture said, he said, I, I, I'm going to do a new thing uh, so he can do what he wants, what he wants to. Listen, the Bible says, uh, the Lord said to Moses, when Moses wanted to know who, who should he ask, who should he say sent him? And the Lord said, I am. I am that I am. That means I am whatever you need me to be when you need me to be it. And I can do whatever I want to, when I want to, where I want to, the way I want to. Why? Because he's sovereign, okay? Goes on to say, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Faith, uh, by faith, Abel offered unto, uh, unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained a witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. And by faith, Enoch was translated, he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. For before this translation, before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Saints of God, this is where we're going with this. I'm telling you, listen, this is where we're going with this. If we can learn to give God everything, that's why it says, cast all your cares upon him. Our focus has to be on Jesus Christ. Everything that we do, I don't care what it is, you should have God in it. He's your wonderful counselor. He's going to tell you what to do and what not to do. I know some of us, or most of us, we have been driving and we usually go a certain way. And this day we don't, we go another way and we don't know why, huh? because God knows something was down the road. He's taking care of us without us even knowing. I tell you often how I be, be daydreaming driving and I'm look, I'm thinking I want to change lanes because I'm looking in the wrong mirror. And as I go to, when I make up my mind to move into the next lane, there's a car there, but God won't let me get there because he's watching out for me and my old silly self. Sixth verse says, but without faith, this is an important one. Without faith, it is important I mean, it's important. It is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So this is what I'm talking about. Everything is about God. Huh? And God gave all the power to Jesus. So everything goes through Jesus Christ. Understand? Jesus said, whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he will do it. So this is where we are. Exercise the faith that we have and let the God get, and, and once we exercise and put the faith to work, that's when we are justified. And since justification means just as if we have never sinned. Can you imagine that? And he takes care of every sin, the ones that we, uh, before we got, before we got saved, they're done with. And he's dealing with the ones that we're, we're, we're working, we're working on now, and the ones that we're going to come into as long as we live. But all you have to do is keep your eyes mind and soul and spirit on Jesus Christ and you got it made. Now I'm telling you this is how simple this is. See we're in it now. We're in the body of Christ and he's going to keep us in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. He's going to keep us in a place where we are sealed and protected as long as we exercise the faith that we have in him. All right so you're waiting on something. huh? Did he promise it? Hmm? Did he say if you ask it's going to be done? then what do you do? You just keep waiting. Huh? What are you gonna, if you stop waiting huh, and if you turn and go another way, then you're going to miss out on it. I think uh, I was talking to somebody, maybe it was Brother Darren, we were talking about uh, uh, having faith in God. You know, And then when the devil will turn you, he'll stop you from waiting on the Lord. And then no sooner than you turn, you, your, 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 your blessing was one more step, two more steps maybe, but you got tired and turned. So now you got to start all over again. Saints, you don't know where it is. You don't know where he's coming. Okay, that's that one. I'm just going to give you these. I want you to, you know, take some time to go through this, this, the chapters yourself, and it'll give you more understanding. But next one is James. We want to go to James, the second chapter of James. And we're going to deal with faith, and faith has to be accompanied by something. That's why we have, you know, it's one thing to have faith, but if we're not doing anything with it, it's not going to be anything. It's not going to amount to anything. So again, it goes on to say here in faith, we're doing uh, James, the second chapter, and I'm going to begin reading 
at the 17th verse, I think, yeah. I want to read the first verse first, and then I'm going to drop down to the 17th. Uh, James 2 and 1 says, My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect to the message. The saints of God, this is just too, too important that we need to pay close attention to it because sometimes we feel like faith has something to do with everything but how we deal with people. You know, we have faith to believe in what we're asking for, uh, healing and, and, and houses and material things. But it takes faith in Jesus Christ to learn how to deal with people who are abrasive, if you will. I'm telling you now, it means something because we are we are accountable to how we deal with people. And this, this, is, this covers everything. Jesus, if you have trouble with a person, huh, then God can fix either you or that person. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because we are called to be peacemakers. Huh? So we cannot allow ourselves to get in this in, 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 into bitter strife and, and, and arguments and debates. Nah, we can't do it. And the Lord will keep us from doing that. Do you understand what I'm saying? And if look, if you have trouble with it, if it just wears on you, he'll move that other person. <laughs> Somewhere it says he'll give men for you. So just hold on to Jesus. Just hold on to Jesus and watch God be God in your life. All right, listen to what James is saying. Well, number, um, chapter two, verse one again. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. Now let's drop down here. Uh, to verse seven, uh, 17, we'll go 17 throughout. It says, even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Ye, uh, ye, uh, yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my work, my faith by my works. This is what he's saying. If you have faith, you're going to have to act on that faith. You have to demonstrate that you have faith. Uh, it's one thing to say it, uh, but it's another thing to demonstrate it. That's, you know, look, that's what, look, everybody would claim that they're all right. But if I allow myself to get into difficult situations with other believers or not even believers, anybody, people on my job, I got to learn how to deal with every person that I come in contact with. So it goes on to say here, uh, uh, on 18 again, yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. And the, the devils there uh, also believe and tremble. So it's no big deal just to believe. You got to act on it. Huh? We say that we believe, we have to demonstrate that we believe by following up on the things that, listen, the things that we're claiming. And the things that we're telling people about the Lord, we have to, they have to see that in us. That's where we have to exercise our faith. And without him, what did he say over there in John? Without me, you can't do nothing. So even these things, even our personal relationships, even uh, these little involvements that we have with people, we need Jesus to counsel us, to give us words to say, tell us when to say it, or tell us how to tell us to help us to hold our peace so that he can keep a peaceful relationship between us and people. Change the things. Listen, I want you to understand something. We have to be like Christ. And this is the point. Jesus Christ died for us when we did not even know who he was. And he knew that when he came into the world and gave his life, made the sacrifices, the sacrifice, everybody was not going to receive him. He knew that, but yet he gave his life for everyone so that if they wanted to be saved, they can be saved. That's where you and I are. But now, saints of God, we're in a much better place because we are actually in him. Now, listen, we are in him. And because we're in him, we don't have to worry about what is in the world. Uh, he's taking care of all that. Uh, you know, all these things that are going on around us in the world, the, 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 the people's hearts are and waxing colder and colder. Men and women are, are doing things that are un, unseemly. And we just don't worry about those things. Who's this? Oh, my. Get Kenny. Give it to me. Give it to me. Oh, that's, that's my, my neighbor. 
Uh, so we don't have these things to worry about. Why? Because God has taken care of all of that. And all he wants us to do is to let him prepare us to meet him when he comes. That's it. That's it. And that's it. But we have to exercise our faith. Let's go on a little further. We understand again, 19th verse. God, uh, you believe in God, it's good. But devils believe also and they tremble. But will thou, O man, O vain man, that, uh, that faith without, uh, I'm sorry, but wilt thou know, o, o vain man, that faith without works is dead? That's exactly right. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? There again, I want you to understand, faith brings justification. Hey, listen yeah. to me. And the only way we can be justified is that we have to exercise that faith. Then our faith brings about justification Justification brings about sanctification, and sanctification allows God's grace to work. We don't still don't deserve it, but because we believe in Jesus and we're acting upon what we believe in Jesus, God's grace covered us. You're safe now. I'm telling you, you're safe. Let the world do what they do, but you don't have it to worry about. If you want to worry, just go ahead and worry. But then worry is comes from fear, and fear is an abomination. So why do that? We don't want to do anything that displeases God. Okay, I'm going to keep reading. Goes on to say, Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God, just because of the faith that he ex exercised. That's it. It says, and you see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Makes sense. Likewise also was not Ahab, uh, Ahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. So again, she acted on her faith. She didn't look. She didn't know what was coming, but she knew that the Israelites were coming to take over the, 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 the city. So she, look, look, she, look, she said, look, spare my family. Bear my family. I hit, she hit him. She didn't let him get found. She says, bear my family. And as her, as a result, she was a harlot, okay? She was somebody that everybody looked down on. But God didn't look down on her because she exercised faith and, and blessed God's men. Huh? And as a result of blessing God's men, that act by itself allowed her family to be saved. Thanks to God, I'm telling you, this thing works. It works. Look, we worried about our children, worried about our loved ones, huh? You exercise your faith in God and, and leave them to God, okay? Because, you know, God is going to work things out in his own time, in his own way. Huh? So you can't do anything. You can't help them. You know, I got a I got a grandson that me and my wife was, well, my wife already spoke to him. He's getting ready to take some action that ain't smart, but he ain't listening. <laughs> but the point is, he got some good advice, okay? He got some good advice. So that's as far as we can go. What can we do now? Pray. Pray and exercise faith that God will do something for him before it's too late. That's what my mom did for me. That's what your moms and your dads did for you. Minister King, I bet you can think back on them days you tried to sneak in the house and get upstairs real quick <laughs> before you had to go down to Bible study. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know you did, you know, because listen, your dad was concerned about you. Um, you weren't, but he was, and here you are now. That's God, says of God. I'm telling you, that's God. All right, we're going to go a little further. Uh, okay, we did that. Uh, yeah, okay, now I want to go. Uh, I want to now, this is what I want to do. Now, we're, we're really almost done, but I want you to get these verses and then I want you to go back and, and kind of spend some time in these verses and let the Lord open up to you because it, it, it is, it, it just makes it so clear that we are in a place where, listen, we're in a place, a better place than we have ever been in life, being in Christ Jesus. And, you know, many of us have been in here a good number of years. So we're pretty much settled in it. But the enemy is not going to just let us serve God without a battle. So we have to understand that when the trouble comes, that's when faith has to be activated. Because no weapon formed against you can prosper. You got to keep that in mind. So what are you going to do? You're going to exercise faith that God is going to keep me out of this, or he's going to get me out of it, or he's going to get, get me through it. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter what it is, because you belong to God, and nobody can touch you now in Christ Jesus. Okay, the next one we want to go to is Matthew. 
and we want to take a look at justification and faith as they work together. Matthew, the 12th chapter, and I believe we're going to be going to the 34th verse, 34 and 37 is basically where we're going to be. Okay, let's get it over here. Okay, Matthew 12. Okay, now here we go. Again, this is uh this is uh, this faith and justification are important parts, but we have to keep in mind that our words, okay, huh? We have to bring our words under subjection so that we can speak to people in a way that's going to be soft and receptive and not abrasive. You know, remember Elder used to tell us about feeding the chicken? You know, he said, if you, if you just bring it, put your hand out there, it's, the chicken will come and eat out of your hand. But if you throw it, you have them running and jumping, you know, so that's the way the word is. The word can either draw you or the word can drive you. It's very important, saints of God. And if we don't let Jesus work in that tongue, we talked about that tongue not too long ago. That thing, that thing will take you out of here. All right, listen to that. Matthew 12, verse 34. You, well, you, 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 well, when you read it yourself, you'll see. But uh, let me, let me, let's see. Let me see. Let me see. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Thirty-four. It says, "Oh, generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man, out of the good treasure of the heart, bringeth forth good things." An evil man out of the evil of uh, out of uh, evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. Now, but I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. Let me say this: You don't want to wait to the day of judgment to try to get the tongue straightened out. You got to give it to Jesus now, and I would give it to him tonight. Okay, don't wait until later on. Give it to him tonight in case you have somebody you got to talk to. Because this is this was in Jesus is saying this, but even or everything that's written in the book is Jesus. But this is this this is Jesus teaching his disciples. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. Listen, for by thy words thou shalt be justified. And by thy words, thou shalt be condemned. Do you hear the book? Are you listening to the book? Saints of God, it is so important. This faith that we exercise has to be able to give God a chance to fix this tongue. You understand? Because, I, I, look, did your Bible say in the 36th verse, every idle word, uh, everyone, every word that is spoken, and not only that, it's going to go into the it's going to go into the heart. So if you don't speak it, but if it's in the heart to be spoken, you're in trouble. And now you got to work on the mind, in the very intent of the heart. So we have listen. If we don't give it, if we don't give it, and it takes faith in God to fix those things that the enemy brings on us. It's just the enemy. The enemy makes us want to speak out. Uh, the enemy makes us want to get even. The enemy wants to, makes us want to fight back. But we have to give that spirit to the, the to the Lord. And that's just a demonic spirit working against us. We have to give it to Jesus and let him fix that thing for us. Because it's going to cost us, saints of God. And we don't want to get before God and find out that we should have turned something over to him before this. So it's important. Okay? It's very important. I just want you to hear that. I'm going to read it again. You go back and read it for yourself. A generation of vipers. See, that's, that, look, that, that's who we are. <laughs> you know, we're, without Christ, we're vipers. Uh, without Christ, we're wicked, mean, evil, hateful, spiteful, bitter. He said, O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. It makes sense. What's in there is coming out. Uh, I remember, you, know, you may all may not remember, Bishop Gordon. Bishop Gordon used to talk about mad day. Uh, and mad day means that, okay, you got something in there that's it's been dormant for a while, 
But one day when you get good and angry, it's coming out. Uh, and you and that's that's the one you don't want it to come out. So it's, it, it says, but I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. That that just speaks all by itself. And again, the faith. Now listen again. It says, look by the words. But if I'm speaking by faith in Jesus Christ, my words are going to be acceptable huh, in the sight of God. And that is going to justify me, which enables God to sanctify me, set me apart from the world. And that means that I'm under his grace. Unmerited, but it's, he gives it to me. I don't deserve it, but he gives it to me anyway. All right, another one, Acts 13. I want you to get these. I'm not going to wear you out, but I want you to hear what I, this is what the Lord gave me, and I'm giving it to you. And trust me, I got to do exactly what I'm reading to you. So don't think I'm putting it off on you by yourself. Okay, this one, Acts 13. Uh, I believe I want to read 35 and through 39, I think. Okay. Okay. Okay, here we go. 35, Acts 13 and 35. He's talking about uh, 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 David just talking about, well, they were talking about David and, uh, and what David was saying about the Lord in his prophecy. It says, wherefore he saith also in another psalm, thou shalt not suffer thy holy one to see corruption. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on sleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. But he whom God raised again saw no corruption, talking about Jesus. But it uh, be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man, Jesus, uh, the, through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. Listen, and by him, all that believe are justified from all things from which they could not be justified by the law. Saints of God, you don't have no weight on you. Huh? God has covered all of your wrongdoing because you believe in his son, Jesus Christ. This is very important. This is very important because we need to know that we are secure in Christ Jesus and we don't have to take up with anything that's going on around us. Just hold on to where you are in Christ Jesus. Because uh, the, the, our little theme song, Hold On, is going to be all right, <laughs> you know, because God's going to take care of you. He's going to do what he promised. But see, we have to stay in him in order to receive what he promised. That's as simple as that. Now, look, we got one more. And then I want you guys to talk, see if you see if there's something you want to share with us. But First Peter, 1 verses 1 through 8. That's where we're going. First Peter one. Okay. First Peter one. Okay. I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna start reading at, at, at verse one and it'll bring us up to what we what we want you to hear. Because this is important. And Peter is, 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 is uh, I'm listening, who is he? To? Oh, he's talking to them in, uh, throughout Pontus in Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. And he, he, he's, he's sharing some things with them. He's, he's applauding them for their faith in God, but he's also pointing out something that we need to hear based on what we just heard about faith and justification. So it's going, I'm going to start reading at the first verse of chapter one. It says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Now listen, this is what he said right here to all these in these cities where he's, he's writing to them. And he says, number one, he's acknowledging that they're elect according to the foreknowledge of God. So he's letting them know, look, God had already pre pre prepared you. 
you have already prepared. You, he foreordained you to be in this. Okay, now listen to what else he said. Uh, it said, elect according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father, through sanctification. All right, that, they look, they're already sanctified. He said, uh, of the spirit through obedience. Okay, obedience. This, this Look, this is what I'm talking about. Obey, exercise your faith in Christ Jesus. It just automatically puts you in here. You don't have to do a thing, but obey the word of God. And that's what he's saying here. It, uh, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Okay, we got obedience, we got justification, we got sanctification, and we got grace. <laughs> that's a complete package. From there, you go to heaven. Okay, and look, Minister King says we ain't got no place to go but up. Uh, that's right. Well, we, we yeah, we do if we stop doing this, but we got we, we don't want to stop doing this. All right, let's go again. That third verse. Blessed be God. Uh, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Do you believe that thing? Huh? Then that's what you're working for. That is worth the trip. It's worth the fight, it's worth the battle, it's worth all the struggles that we go through. Because Paul said somewhere, these light afflictions that we go through right now cannot be compared to the glory that God has prepared for us. I'm telling you now, it's worth the fight, it's worth the fight. So let's go a little further. Fifth verse, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be reserved in the last, revealed in the last time. So again, from one to five, we, we are kept hmm? through our faith, our belief. We were justified. We were sanctified. We we're under grace. And, he's, and he said, who are kept, we are being kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. My goodness, this is getting better as I read, because this thing means that it's already done, children. It's already done. All we have to do is just stay the course. Stay the course. Remember what Paul told them fellows on that, in that ship? A rock a hurricane, a tornado or something. And it was tearing up the ship. And the guys were going to uh, load, let down the boats and try to get to shore. And he said, except these abide in the ship, huh? they're not gonna, they, 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 they won't make it. He said, except they abide in the ship, they're going to be lost. He said, but the Lord has promised me tonight that everybody, not the hair on anybody's head, is going to be known. We're all going to make it. Huh? That's what because he trusted in God, and that's what these that's what these uh, uh, these people in these cities. That's what they're doing, and that's what you and I are doing. But we got to stay the course. And the devil is going to come now, even after tonight. After you're getting all this good news, he might meet you tomorrow morning before you get to your car. Huh? But you got to be able to trust God to get you from from that point to where he wants you, okay? He, 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 he won't, he'll take him. If you give him to him, cast all your cares upon him before he cares. All right, let's go a little further, sixth verse. Wherein ye greatly rejoice through now for a season, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. All right, so Paul is saying, uh, Peter is saying all this, say, look, you see him, you, uh, you were foreordained for this thing, uh, you, you're, being, uh, you're being kept, uh, and re, until, until the time this thing is going to be revealed to you, he said. But you're going, you're going through a season. He says, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Yes, you're going to have some trouble. Yes, you're going to have some trials. Yes, you're going to have some tribulations. That's all a part of the walk. But that's why Jesus came so that He could take us through them. That's what I'm talking about. We're going to make it, saints of God, if we just hold on to what God has left on record. We're going to make it. So he's telling these, and these people must be having some problems over there too. And that's why Peter is telling them to hold on. Seventh verse, listen, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than the gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Good gracious. Your faith is, is more precious than gold. 
Uh, faith is, is, is going to get you through these trials and these tribulations. He said, look, it, 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 you know, that, 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 that the trial of your faith, you're going to be tried. I hope you hear me. You're going to be tried. God's going to let it happen to you because you need to know where you stand in the Lord. You got to be tested. You got to be tried. And when your test comes, you got to take a stand. And Bible says, after you've done all that you can do to stand, stand there for it. And you put on Christ Jesus, put on all the all the armor, everything, the helmet, the shield, the, 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 the breastplate, the, the uh, girdle about with, the, with, with, with truth and your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Do all, put it all on. And the scripture says somewhere, put you on the Lord Jesus Christ, put all of him on, huh? that you may be able to withstand huh? in the evil day and not to make any uh, provision for the flesh. You got to do it. You t it takes Jesus. It takes Jesus, and you're already in Him. Huh? You don't. You don't have to try to get in now. You're in there. Huh? Your tarrying days are over. Huh? God has saved you, and now He's given you the ability through His power to live a godly life. Take advantage. Yeah. Of it. All right, finishing up. Whom having not seen, this is what I want you to hear. Right, let me go back. I'm going to read through this because I want you to hear how how it reads. Seventh verse again, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, through it, be, uh, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. That's your faith. Your faith is going to shine out. Said in the eighth verse, whom having not seen, ye love. This is where it comes in. This is where the faith comes in. Whom ye have not seen, ye love. In whom though now ye see him not, Yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Listen, receiving the end of your faith, even the sanctification, sanctif salvation of your soul. Saints of God, that's the whole picture. That is the whole picture. You stick it out. You let the Lord have his way in your life. And at the end of this struggle, trust me, you're going to have, you're, you're going to find out your, your soul is going to be saved. Now, what evangelist Carmichael used to say, she used to say, you were not saved until we get to heaven. Okay. <laughs> so we're, we, we're, 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 we're saved to live for God, but yeah. we, we're not safe. I'll put it that way until we get up out of here. So that's all we have saved. And this is what, is, this is so important. Again, your faith in God, huh? brings about the justification. The justification, again, is just as if I never sinned. And that you can you can believe that because the Lord said that the sins that we committed, he has cast them into the sea of forgetfulness. He doesn't remember them. So if we do step out of line, we repent and get back in line, that gets erased too. That's not going to be in the book. So every time we fall, we repent. Every time we repent, that's done. We just got to keep going. So, and hey, don't let the devil put you on no guilt trip on you. Huh? That okay. devil has nothing. He ain't got nothing to, to, good to say. You know, he, look, he's going to tell you, give you a little bit of word and a little bit of lies to try to deceive you. But okay. he has nothing to offer. So don't take his advice. You don't have to fight your own battles. You don't have to do the things that the scripture says not to do. But your tongue, okay, you got to make sure that that thing is wrapped up and tied up in Jesus Christ so that you don't blurt out something that you'd be ashamed of. Sometimes yes. we say some things and, and, and we want to get to the people to make it right and they're gone, okay? Yes. Now the devil's going to make you think, well, you, <laughs> you sure ain't going to have it now because you can't get to him to repent. But you can <laughs> repent from your heart, you know, and let God know that if I could get to him, I would. But we got to sincerely mean these things so that we can do the things that we're supposed to do. Okay, I did all the talking. I want you to give me some feedback. What do you think? How do you how do you feel about what you're hearing? Do you think this thing is going to be enough to get you in, or can you do it? Uh, Brother Darren, is that a hand? Yes. Yeah, I want to uh, I want to say something. I you said as you were thinking about honestly, you sport, sport, sport analogies. You know, you said faith without works is dead. Right. I heard a story about Kobe Bryant. Okay. And that he would go practice after games for hours. Michael Jordan would do the same thing. And the reason why they would do that because they believed in their ability. Right. But they kept practicing to make their ability work, work better. Right. It's like if a person say 
I believe God can bless me with a job, but they don't go fill out an application. You can't expect them to fall out, fall out the sky. Right. right. Because even God himself, even God himself worked. Right. When he, when he, made, when he made the universe, he yeah. worked. Mm-hmm. He could have he could have just flipped it in there, but if he would have done it like that, right. he would have he, he he never been able to tell us to work. Right. Because, mm-hmm. so he showed us example, I work, you gonna work. Right. Okay. I got faith, through my faith, I made all this. Through your faith, you can do the same thing. Right. Yeah. You know, and I give y'all an example. I give you an example in Jesus. You know, even Jesus, through his faith, died for us. It's because his faith, he believed. And right. he was t- he was testing and trying, yeah. but he still kept pushing forward. We got to do the same thing. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, that, that point about practice, it, it makes a difference. You know, practice makes perfect. So if you're working on something, you just keep working on that. And then look, if you have something that you that you're good at, if you if some part of your life is easy, all right, just let that be that. But work on that thing that's difficult. So that's where yeah. you that's where you grow out of the things that the enemy can use against you. Because once you get sound in them, the devil don't even bother you with them anymore. You know, there probably was a question in some people's minds which baptism was right. But once we come to know which one is right. They can talk about the other one all they want. It don't mean a thing. So the right. more you practice this word, <laughs> applying this word in your life, I think Minister King used an expression, work the word. That's, and that's exactly right. Put that word to work. Let it work for you. Yeah. Right, thank God for that. Anything else? Anybody else back there? So, Elder, it's yeah. true. Um, uh-huh. Kind of going by what Darren was just saying. So if you want a job, you go and you look for a job. Right. You know. You have a faith that God's going to bless you with a job. So the flip side of that, you're desiring something, you go and you pursue it, and it doesn't come to pass. You applied your faith, you applied the works, and still nothing happened. Okay. How do you, that's the part that always tripped me up, because I'm like, faith without works is dead, but when you put the the works forth, and it still doesn't come about right it kind of discourages you okay but you know what sister again you're trusting god for the job or if or we, we use the work thing we're trusting god for the job but we have to understand that if we're really trusting god for it and it doesn't we don't get it it might not be the one that he yeah, has for us for you. so that's why and we don't get discouraged because we just keep pressing that's what Darren was just talking about you just you just keep pressing you keep going you keep looking you don't stop because you want a job, and when you put forth an effort for a job, you're going to get a job. The one that you have your eye on may not be the one that God has for you if you try, if you put it, gave it to him to get you a job. So you, I, I understand exactly what you're saying because you focus on this job. This You know, you saw it. This is a, this is a nice job. I think I, 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 I do well there. I see you, but Sister Betty, hold on. Uh, I, and, I, I, and I feel like this is the one for me. But it may not be because again, sis, we're trusting God for the job. And that's as far as we can go. Go ahead. So it's just so it also confuses me because it says, um, if you abide in my words and my words in you, you can ask what you will in my name and it shall be done. Right. So when you couple all of that together and it still doesn't happen, mm. for me, it just leaves me scratching my head to say, wait, you told me I can ask what I will. Uh-huh. It is not outside of your will. Right. And I did the things that you told me to do. I put the works behind the faith. Yeah. And still nothing happened. So it was like, when, is it, when it the Lord put something in your heart? He says, this is what I want you to do. And then you follow faith through what God told you to do. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily your desires. That's where I'm just, I've been always forever in a lifetime confused by <laughs> all of that when it yeah. doesn't happen. Yeah, I, look, I, I hear what you're saying. And I'm telling you, again, you have to understand that God's got that. When you put that thing, when you put that thing on the altar, the Lord has he's got it. Um, yeah. You got to remember now, time uh, is in God's control. You know, mm-hmm. the things that we want, God knows when to give them to us. Now, what we can do is we can step out and we can go ahead and do what we think we want. What this? Well, look, I'm going to take this job, and it might not be the one that God mm-hmm. had for you, but we learn to wait. And here's what happens: is if you just <laughs> learn to wait, 
And I know some people have to wait longer than others. It looks like some people just get blessed every other day, but some people <laughs> have to wait. Uh, Moses was 40 years in the wilderness. Moses was 40 years, uh, uh, he, was, he was 40, he, he, yeah, 40 years tending sheep. He was 40 years walking around in the wilderness. Joshua was 40 years or so as his servant. And you know what I'm saying? So it's time, but when the time, time came for them to act, they knew to act. They knew just when to do what God said to do. And it's the same way with this type of situation. We ask, and then we trust God for it. And it's as far as we can go. And if we do anything other than that, then we're going ahead of him. Because if he doesn't give us what we're asking for, and we're trusting him for it, then we know that whatever, it, it this wasn't for me. It just, this one wasn't for me. And sometimes it's going to seem like the first 15 aren't for me, you know, but I got to keep waiting until he gives it to me because we have nobody else to turn to. And if we let the devil give us something that we, that God is not getting wants us to have, it's going to be a problem for us. So we just have to trust it. And you know what? Some people can endure hardness like that. And some people can't. And then we get to looking on people who are getting blessed every 15 minutes. And we seem mm -hmm. like, you know, I'm, I'm, I do this and I do that, but it, it, God still, you know, keep in mind, Job was testifying, God testified, he was a perfect and an upright man. And you know what? We don't know how long Job went through his sickness. We don't know. But at the end of it, because he kept his faith in the Lord, God brought him out and actually doubled his blessing. So he's going to do yours or whoever else is waiting. He's going to take care of you. Whatsoever you ask in my name, I will do it. All right, wait, I have Sister Betty back there. You know, it's just, you know, and, and that's true, as long as it's according to his will. Everything that we ask for is not in God's will for us to have. Right. You know, some things are, some things aren't. And you look at, you look at how, how long God waited, how we were so disobedient from Adam and Eve. We just constantly, time after time, time after time, until all those centuries, 1,500 you know, years went by, 3,000 years went by, and here he sent his son Jesus to die for us, to show us the way. And he waited. He waited for us patiently, mm -hmm. you know, to come to be reconciled with him back into his back into his body of the home of believers. So we just have to have patience and trust in him because it's not always what we ask for that he's going to answer. It's sometimes just the manner in which we ask and our obedience to how we follow him that he will he will answer the prayer as well. Yeah. So we have to just it's all about him. It's not about us. Right not about us at all right you know and, yeah and, and sometimes you know we might we might go through all these things that we but the lord might know there's something there's something in in there something else some other ulterior motive that you might not even be aware of right exactly of. so we got to wait exactly and learn to put, yes. it, put it in his hands because he, he he can't make a mistake he just can't no no you he know, can't it's we, impossible we can't lean on our we can't lean on our own understanding about right. things. It's all right. about him because his right. ways are not our ways. Right. His thoughts yeah. are not our thoughts. Yeah. And keep this in mind. Patience is a virtue. That's right. <laughs> it, is, Amen. It, it is a virtue Amen. And, it, and it will pay off in the end. Um, yes, it brother, will. Brother Darren. Real quick, the, the, Sister Judy, there's something I, on, the, on the answer to your question. So I just saw something that there's a key thing in that Senate um, in first, uh, first Peter chapter 1, verse 7. It says that the trial of your faith, though it be more precious than gold yeah. that perish, though it be trial of fire, may be found with praise and glory and honor at the appearance, right. appearance of Jesus. Right. That means the end. Right. That means the end. So, and I hate to say this the way it's going to sound, sometimes we may want something that we may never see, That's but right. we get rewarded by Amen. keeping our faith unto the end. Right. Amen. Until the end. Amen. Because the end is going to be so much greater than what we wanted on this earth. Right. That's right. That's man, good. That's, that's an amen right there. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm amen. saying amen. Yeah, that's good. And you know what? And listen, for somebody who's waiting, it might not make you want to jump, you know, but still, patience is a virtue. And at the end of your faith, you're going to find out that it was worth it. And all the That's things right. that we experience before we get to heaven, we're not, we're just going to say, my God, you know, that was nothing. 
<laughs> yes. I, understand, I understand that. I truly do. But then my question becomes, why promise it if it's not going to happen? Why make that statement if that's not what is going to happen? Mm-hmm. I get, I understand completely what Darren just explained. I really mm-hmm. do. But then it goes back to why put that there if, if that's not it in your always heart? intended? Well, here's you the thing. What did you say, Sister Robinson? I said, the Lord had placed it in your heart. So I'm mm-hmm. with what you're saying. Right. Everything that we ask has been placed in our heart. Right. And you ask for it and you never haven't gotten or never got it. And mm-hmm. I'm fully understanding what you're saying that, well, why did you give me the desire to ask for it? Right. Correct? Uh, right. Yes. Uh, that's correct? correct. Okay. Now, uh, let me, can I, let me, yep, can go I finish? Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, everybody on the prayer line, maybe the men don't know that by May, <clears throat> my arm is two years old. Right now, I need to be upstairs taking some pain medicine. Two years, I have not been out of pain. I'm losing my mind. I've gone to specialists, universities. I've been everywhere. Now they told me try NIH. That's National Institute of Health. That's the government-run facility on conditions that your local doctors can't solve. I'm, I'm just ready to pull my hair out, and I'm saying, Lord. This is going on two years. Why? What have I done to suffer this thing? I have to accept the fact the Lord knows I'm hurting. He knows where I've been. He knows what I'm doing. I don't understand it, Trudy. But, and I've, I've done, you know, I've told you, they've written me over $1,000. Thank God for the insurance in creams and lotions that, that I might as well just throw in the trash. I'm suffering this arm. And I, I don't know why, but I'm waiting. Maybe one day he's going to answer, and maybe I won't answer. Maybe I'll take this pain to 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 my grave. I don't know. Mm-hmm. All I know is I'm in 24 hour pain. Well, you know, because when I'm talking yeah. to you, sometimes truly I, I can't talk. I just took pain medication. I got to go to sleep, and I can't figure out. It's two years, and I'm ready to. I'm just so frustrated. Why am I suffering this? Anybody out there got an answer? Uh, I'll accept it. Wait, let me say this for Kirk. I see your hands back there. I'll get you. But let me say this. Keep in mind, says for God, how long did mankind wait for Jesus, who was promised by every yeah. prophet, you know, every prophet, everybody that spoke about him? You know, they, look, they waited on him. They died off. But he came. Uh, he came when the time was right. I'm telling you, God has a time set. Now, let me say this. Hold that hand there, Brother Calvin. I'll get you. All we have to do, if things aren't going the way we think they should go, go back in the book and make sure that we are lined up with that. Because that's all God wants. God wants us to be in him, lined up with the word of God, line upon line, precept upon precept, doing his will, and that's it. So if we're doing all that we need to do, like Job, God couldn't find enough fault in Job, but Job went through what he went through because God wanted him to. Now, I'm going to say this. If you are in Christ and you're doing your job in Christ and God might want to show you off, okay, he might want to use you to show you off to somebody else who may be going through something, may not take them that long, but you can say to them, look, I've been waiting for so many years. My, who was the lady? The lady we knew, she was waiting for her husband. He separated. They went somewhere. And uh, for 20 years, 20 years, he baby. came. He, my man came home. He was saved. He got saved and, and after 20 years of drinking and drugging. And I don't came, think I would have wanted him. <laughs> well, look, she was saved. <laughs> she took him back. So uh, again, let's let's not charge God. Okay, let us make sure that where we are, where where we are, where are, where we are in Him, and let Him do what He does. He's going to keep His word. He cannot. Go back on his word. Amen and amen. <laughs> well, hold on. Wait. You said he's going to keep his word. He's going to. No, you may not. You may have to go to your grave with that word. But then if that's the case, you're going to get it at the end. That's what he said yeah. up here. Yes. 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 The, if I don't yeah. get it now, I'm going to, I'm, I won't even want it. Well, that's not going to do me no good. I'm in what, pain now. Wait a minute. If you get to heaven, you ain't going to want nothing well, you left back here. <laughs> you know, you'd be glad to get up out of here. 
All right, listen, Brother Calvin, I see your hand back there. Yes, uh, I just want to say to the sister, when when things don't happen or it appear not to be happening, where is your trust? Where is my trust? Where is your trust? When things don't happen and you said you believe you did everything and he gave us these promises, do you trust him? And if you trust him, then we must wait on him. That's all. Yeah, but we've but she been waiting, I've been waiting. <laughs> That's okay. Then, then, then just wait. Yeah. Yeah. Do you trust him? Yeah. That's the question right now. Do you trust him? Yes, yes, okay. I, I truly understand. But the thing of it is, uh, uh brother Calvin, um the the appearance, I don't really care. It's ugly, but that don't bother me. What bothers me is pain. And and why am I in? I'm in two years of pain. They'll tell you I'm never out of pain. So now, yes, I trust him, and I believe. Well, I don't know. Maybe I'm supposed to suffer this to help somebody. I I have no clue. I fast. I prayed. I've stood on my head. I've questioned the Lord. I've done some of everything to figure out why am I in pain. Come May, will be two years. Uh, yes, I trust him. I'm trusting Amen. that one day. This thing is not going to hurt. I don't know. But yes, Amen. I do. To answer your question, yes, I do trust him. But put yourself Amen. in my place after two years of pain. You're wondering, Lord, I said, are you there? Do you hear me? <clears throat> you listen, know? listen, he died. Look, yeah. All the things that we can complain about, <laughs> he died. And he died a, an excruciating death. He didn't come and get injected and go to sleep. Uh, he suffered he, and he did it for us. So now he said, if they did it to me, they're going to do it to you. And he also said, that, you know, we have to suffer. With, with, uh, uh, mm -hmm. We have to uh, uh, with our fellowship, or how? I, mean, I, I know what I'm trying to say. I'm getting, I'm getting it out. But we have to suffer along with him. So that's a part okay. of what we have to go through. Big pardon? Oh, we have to suffer in order to reign with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's it. And if we're going to get, if, we, if we're going to make it to him. Then we got to go through our suffering too. We just don't have to give our blood, shed our blood right now. All right, Sister Regina, I see you back there. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe I'm I'm not interpreting this the way how I guess um, when Brother Calvin said that that is saying that sis doesn't trust him. No, I'm not, I, I'm not interpreting it that well, way. Well, he was asking. He was asking. He was her asking. Because I, I interpreted what Trudy was saying was the Bible said you can ask you anything in my name, I'll do it. Yeah, right. The Bible says um that uh like you said, by faith, um we are to believe the things that are not seeing hope with I can't I can't right now get yeah, my thoughts yeah. together. <clears throat> but again, I I assume I interpreted that she was saying she is exercising her measure of faith. Right. She is trusting and believing the lord right. she is holding on right she is praying she is fasting she is looking at god's word and reading it and saying god i know these are your words i know these are your promises right. i'm you said not one tittle of my word will pass away right you're saying that what you say is golden right. it's a it's an absolute promise i thought her her interpretation is Okay, if I'm doing the things that you're saying and your word says it, uh -huh. why did, hasn't it come to fruition? Uh -huh. And I don't think, am I wrong? I don't think that has no, anything no, to do no. with trust. No, no, right. you're right. No, 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 you no, 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 you, you, no, he, he, he she he, is trusting the Lord. I know, but he, he didn't say she wasn't. He just asked a question, you know, he posed it as a question because even though all the things that we're doing, they're right according to the word of God, we may not get the answer to our prayer when we expect it or when we want it. It's going to be in God's timing. That's all we're saying. Right. And, you know, you can have you can have absolute trust, total commitment to give everything to the Lord. And again, now we have examples because we look at the prophets, all the prophets. We look at what happened with Job. And then we look at Jesus himself what he went through, he gave up everything, but he had to go all the way through, all the way through 
until he got to his end. And when he got to the end, he said, it is finished. There is a place, a place or a time appointed for that prayer to be answered. It just is. And, and, and all we have to do is to continue with the Lord. So I listen, exercise your faith, do all the works that you, you're called to do, and God is going to do his part because we, we can't go beyond him. We can't figure him out. There's no reason for us to try to figure out why haven't you answered my prayer huh? because he already said that he's going to do it. So by faith, we wait and by faith. And again, like with Sister Andy's situation, if it don't come now, if she gets to heaven, she won't even think about that arm. She'll have a new one. Yeah, yeah. but why? But, but still, I'm hurting now. Yeah, but that's, that may be what you have to go through now. It has to be <laughs> because you're going through it. It ain't even no maybe. You know, whatever you want to do, Gracias. Before Aaron, Aaron, I'm sorry. Uh, let me jump in. Yeah. But truly, are you asking like if I'm praying or wanting things that will benefit me on this side, why haven't they come to fruition or <laughs> they haven't come? Because you're saying that it's gonna come at the end. So I'm I'm a little perplexed with the okay, for example, like a job, like okay, the job will benefit me on this side of life. Yeah, it yeah, ain't going to benefit yeah. me on the other side of life. <laughs> Trust me. Like, you, yeah, but you'll get it now. If, that, if that's what you want and that's what God has promised, you, look, you ask for a job now because he knows that's not going to do you any good. You won't need a job in heaven. Okay, <laughs> well then what about something like marriage? Like, so I understand we who are married are married to each other and we're bonded in Christ or in God. And those who are single, who want to, who desire to be married right. and don't ever get married, so they they get their marriage on the other side? No, nope, ain't no marriages over there. No. Listen, but you're married to the Lord. No. Yeah, but I mean, there won't right. be. And marriage is not outside the will of God. That was the first thing he ordained between a man and a woman. So right. if I'm asking, and that's not what I was speaking of, but with that example, if that's what I'm desiring right. and I have done all that the Lord has instructed me to do in right. order to receive my husband right. and my husband still isn't here, like, I don't get it. I'm not, that's not asking anything. Outside. That was the first thing he did. Like, but Sister Ann, and I've heard, I'm right. sorry, you're writing me to, to cut you off. Like, Sister Ann, I've heard you over the years. Oh, my saying, I know you, I know you're kidding. And you'll say, I've been asking God to make me, uh, make me a millionaire. So, yeah. Okay, if you don't get it on this side, <laughs> what good is it going to benefit you on the other side? Uh, uh, well, wait, well wait. let me clear that up. The, uh, I get a phone call. I said to my husband one day, he was coming in from Bible study. I said, the Lord, uh, I, I asked the Lord to, to um, I want a million dollars. And I said, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to spend it on myself. I'm mm -hmm. going to share it with everybody. I'm going to mm -hmm. share it with whoever. The Lord say share well, oh, shortly yeah. after I made that statement, the phone rings. Yeah. And it's somebody we know. I'm not going to call the name. And the person says, Sister Annie, I'm sitting here in the dark having a box of chocolate. And the Lord told me to call you to tell you that he heard your, what you said. He's going to give you that million dollars. And I almost fainted. She's in Philly. And uh, you're going to get that million. And you're going to do just what you told him. You're going to share it with everybody. I was totally shocked. So then I said, it scared me so bad. I said, hey, Lord, I don't need it. You heard it. And I and you let me know that you heard me and that you'll give it to me if I want it. But I don't need the million. It was Sister the fact Anne. that he sent somebody to tell me there's no way she could have known. But my, Sister Ann, you know what I'm I guess my concern is more of the things that we are praying for or desiring right. that will well, benefit us on, on the earthly side of life. Right. And we, we leave here and didn't get those things. Elder said, you get them on the other side. But some stuff, I'm like, it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. How, how is that a benefit to me on the other side? Yeah, but now, well, now, I'm now, working every day. I don't want to work in heaven. Well, here, now, here, here's, here's what, here's what <laughs> I mean by that. Because what I'm saying is you don't get whatever it is you left on earth. You don't get that over there. You, that is, this is for earth. You're going to get heavenly things. And it's going to, they're going to be far better than what you what you're getting over here. That's what the scripture is saying here. 
uh, seventh again, that the trial of your faith, and that's what you're going through right now, and that's what we're talking about, this trial that somebody is going through, being much more precious, talking about your faith, <laughs> of gold that perishes. So everything on this side is going to perish. So you're not going to take anything any of that over, over into heaven because there's no place for it. And then it says, uh, though it be tried with fire, and that's that, that's the waiting, that's the trial that you're going through, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So your faith is going to outshine anything that you've ever asked for over here. Now, I got I listen, I'm telling you, whatever you ask the Lord for, you just have to wait to see if and when he's going to give it to you. That's it. And if you don't get it, it's because it's not for you to have. So if we start saying that, well, why don't God bless me? Then that means we're not really trusting him because he has the absolute best answer, the best situation. He knows everything there is to know about us. And some people don't get married because the, the Lord, it, 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 well, maybe the Lord sent somebody that we didn't want. You know, that could be. We don't know that because this is God's doing. But if God's got a husband for you, you're going to get him. Trust me now, you're going to get him. He might not be Denzel Washington. He might look like uh, <laughs> look like somebody got knots on his head and no teeth, but he'll, he'll work and he'll take care of you. But what I'm trying to tell you is that you'll get it. Yes. If you, if, if I'm telling you now, the scripture can't lie. Huh? The scripture can't lie. So you have to trust God with all your heart for everything. And Listen, if, you, if it's for you, you're going to get it. If it's not, it's all right, Jesus, because he's taking care of me in every other area of my life. He's doing everything for me. All right, I got some more here. Darren, I got to get you first. Go ahead. Okay. okay. I, I want to say this, uh, and this goes to Mother Annie, uh, Mother Annie, for, both, um, for you as well. After 16 years of being disabled, of living through pain for 16 years, and I'm not saying this to, to out Trump you, I'm saying this as a, as a, as a as a help to you, yeah, yeah. as a testimony. I live through pain out of this world every day with the breaks and fractures. Y'all seen what, what I went through. I mean, y'all seen when I was years ago. I read Paul in the second, I'm sorry, in second like Corinthians. He said he went to God three times to remove the thorn. Yep. I told him my grace is sufficient for me. Sometimes these pains that we have in our body, these thorns, it hurts me like, God, won't you take it from me? Take it from me. But he said, I put it there to, to show my glory to you. I've been able to be able to minister so many people of God's goodness to me through the pain I go through every day. I'm talking about through the falls, through not being able to move. I mean, even right now as we speak, my lower back hurts so bad. Okay. And I'm tired of all this medication and stuff like that. But it's a thorn, but it's one God has allowed to stay there. Just like in your arm, he's allowed that thorn to stay there. So keep praying, keep believing God. Right. At the same time, keep showing, show you, show God, show Jesus to other people of how your faith is. You stand strong and believe until you, until you take your last breath. Yeah. So the truth, keep on believing, keep on believing, keep on yeah. believing. Ask God to, to, to keep asking God for, for that thing and keep believing. Keep speaking his word back to him. Tell him when you pray, say, God, your word says da 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 da. Your word says da da da. Because the Bible says, He said, My word will not return to be void. Speak, pray his word back to him. Tell him that your word said. At the same, same time, faith without works is dead. Keep on going out there. Put that thing out there. Keep on searching. Keep on knocking the doors. Because eventually it's going to happen. Yep. Eventually it's going to happen. Yeah, absolutely. And one more thing, too. The uh, oh goodness, I got old, I can't remember stuff. Uh, well, while you're thinking about it, let me say this, Darren. Um, oh, excuse me, brother Calvin. Um, mm -hmm. I get a phone call one day. Uh, look at my phone, it's my doctor. Now, he don't call you, he, he don't call you, right? And I picked up the phone and I said, Dr. Marwitz, what's going on? He said, I'm out here at your church. I said, Well, why are you at my church? He said, we wanted to just ride around the parking lot. I said, why? He said, I haven't told you this, but you shouldn't even be here. And when you died and you was out for a minute or two, whatever, and they brought you back, I knew something happened at that <coughs> church. So every so often, my wife and I ride through the parking lot. So I said, well, come on in. He said, well, maybe one day he's Jewish. I don't believe in Jesus. He said, but I know something happened to you 
very unusual. Mm -hmm. So, Amen. you know, and I'm grateful for the fact that a Jewish guy goes out yes. to my church, he sits on the parking lot, he thinks there's a blessing just sitting there because he saw me come through back to life. He stood over me when I took my breath came back. So I know that the Lord is doing something with this arm. Yes. And, yes. you know, I'm just, just have to do what you say. Just wait, you know. That's it. You gotta wait. So it has helped somebody. It's helped Dr. Morowitz. Yes. Brother Calvin. Brother Amen. Calvin. Um, I just want to read a footnote on uh, 1 Peter uh, verse 7. Great. It says, all trials are designed to do three things. Prove your faith, develop your faith, and glorify your Savior. Savior, You never know what you believe until you face a test. Right. Heavily gold, goldsmith wants to refine your character. Right. And, and this is the thing, saints. When things don't happen in your time, can you maintain an attitude of gratitude towards God? That's it. That's it. Can you maintain that when you don't see things happening? You know, this may be a, a, a test for you right now. Mm -hmm. Can you maintain an attitude of gratitude even though things don't appear to be going your way? Right. Things don't appear to be happening. But you got to remember, God works in the unseen, mm -hmm. and he's not bound by time. That's right. That's good. Amen. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, listen, the saints of God, understand, we're going to really close out, but just understand something. God is, 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 is not coming up short on his promise. Uh, you, you're going to receive what you ask for. And God is like this. This is what I want to say. As you're praying, you know, you're asking. And if the Lord's not going to do what you're asking, he will let you know to stop praying for that. You know, he'll tell you, he'll let you know to stop praying for that because I'm, I'm not going to answer that. Because now, but you just still have to keep your faith, your trust, your confidence in the Lord. Because at the end of this that we're going through, it's going to be glorious. That's what verse, that's what verse seven was saying. When we see Jesus, all these things, we don't have nothing to do. We don't have nothing to worry about. Sister Trudy, I see your hand back here. So I'm looking back at Hebrews chapter 11, okay. where, you know, where you started. Right. And it said, you know, um, verse two, for by it, the elders obtained a good report. Yeah. And so I'm looking through and I'm looking at the different ones that are mentioned. And most of them, the Lord had told them what to do. Mm -hmm you know, but he didn't give them any further instructions. So it wasn't their heart's desire to go and do these different things like with um, Abraham. Right. God told him to go, you know, and sacrifice. Right. So there was, God put that in him. With Sarah, he promised her a child. He right. put that in her. So she, the faith that they activated was based on <clears throat> um, what God had told them to do, instructed them to do, the for the the how it played out, you know, required faith, their actions. Right. right. So maybe a better question would have been, or would be, the things that I need to exercise faith on are those the things that the Lord speak to me, and then I go and move on versus my desires. Well, keep this in mind: the desire that's in your heart, God put it there. You know, he'll give you the desires of your heart, so it's already in you. See, look, here's, here's, what, we, here's what we don't have to do. We don't have to do anything, huh? because everything that, we, everything that we do is all God already knows about it. So when God gives us something and he tells us what to do, and this is what the word is. The word is telling us how we ought to live. So that's what we do. We live according to the word of God, and then God leads and guides us. The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So when God gives us an instruction, by faith we accept it. We don't have to do this. We don't have to accept this word. We don't have to believe that God's going to answer our prayer. But we ask because he said to ask. And then we trust him to do what he's going to do. Uh, Abraham did, really did not have to, 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 to follow the Lord's instruction. But he wanted to. And like you said, the Lord put it in him. But the Lord always draws. 
So nobody comes to the Lord except they're drawn. So we don't do anything of ourselves. You know, and the prayer that you pray and that you ask for, God put that in you to ask for it. And he now he's going to see if you're going to wait for it. Nothing happens by surprise when God is in it. He just does everything that he wants to do for us. And it may not be what we want, but it's always what he wants for us. And right I get now, it. Beg pardon? I said, I get it. I, I'm, I'm just thinking like right now, like the job that I have, I've been working there for 19 years. Right. It's definitely not the job I wanted. My heart is with law enforcement, always mm -hmm. have been. I right. have a passion for the law. Whether it's law enforcement, whether it's a lawyer, enforce, like I like the law, but I need a job and the Lord provided this one mm -hmm. for, for 19 years. I've right. tried to escape it and I can't. Right. So I see that, you know, there's a purpose for me being there, but that's not my desire. Like that's <laughs> not what I feel God put in me as right. a small child. I've always wanted to be involved with law, right. but I'm on child protective services. The most hard breaking job that you could ever have like mm -hmm. <laughs> but i'm thankful for it yeah. but i'm like where does my desire come in to bring in the law enforcement part of it well, the the law of it the the i don't know the justice part of it right by it's doing not, the doing the best job that you can where you are right now see that desire is in there and look this is not the end you you may get that that law enforcement job or that in that industry it's still there. It's still your desire, but God got you someplace where you He can use you there. You're a benefit there. You got you got His Spirit there, so you can be a help where you are now. And He wants you to do the best you can do right there, you know. And He knows that it's not the one you want. But I'm telling you, Sister Trudy, one day you're gonna have a copy of the four more. But you have helped thousands of broken-hearted. Kids, you're doing really I have well. it's a broken it's a heart heart home. job. It's a yeah. very depressing job. It's very depressing. But but you've helped thousands of kids. Rewarding, but that's not what I wanted to do. And I do understand my purpose for being there. Yeah. It took me a long time. I understand my purpose for being there, but it's not that I want to be a cop. It's just I. <laughs> yeah. It's the law, the the policies, the regulations, the procedures. That's where my passion lies. Sister, you're and I've not there. had an opportunity to exercise that. Well, right now he needs you to comfort those kids. Yeah, but you, you listen, I'm telling you something. Just don't give up that desire. It's just leave leave it right where it is, Trudy. 19 years, 20, you know, 19, it might be 20, but one of these years you're going to get your opportunity. You know, I'm telling you, this book can't lie. And if you want that, then you're going to get it. I'm telling you. And all you have to do is do the do what you're doing now do it as unto the well, lord well suppose he doesn't want her to have that well then she won't get it all right <laughs> it's up to him now that's what i'm trying to get you to see it's all yes. about jesus you know and he's going to let you he's going to do what he wants you to do because he has already determined what you're going to be doing he got mm -hmm. you where you are and he's going to keep you there until it's time to move on all right, we look, we're running out of time. We thank, thank the Lord. This has been entertaining and it's been enlightening. Lightning. And I say to God, just learn to do the word. Minister King, work the word. Is that it? Amen. Word. All right. So we thank God for you. And we're, we're going to let you go, but we thank God for the service tonight, just to, to sharing the word. We got to exercise our faith. Brings about justification. Justification brings about sanctification. Sanctification brings about grace. And that's where we are. We're in God's grace. Stay there. And don't let up, don't let that devil trick you into doing anything but what's written. Because he's gonna do is he's gonna do what he, only he can do. He's gonna fix every situation. And whatever you have on the altar, just leave it there. Daniel prayed, what? Three weeks went by before the angel came and answered his prayer. You know. So what we're going through, we have, a, what the, we didn't read all of 11, but there's so many cloud of witnesses, people that have gone through, people who have made sacrifices for serving God. So that's what we're doing now. We're making sacrifices. All right, we thank God for you. We're going to let you go. Dear Lord, we thank you again for the opportunity to come together and share the word of God and letting us know that you have, you're in charge of everything. And all that we have to do is continue to believe in you and you're going to make it so, Lord God, that we're going to be justified, sanctified. We're going to be set aside for your glory. 
We don't understand the things that we go through sometimes because the flesh just doesn't realize what the spirit is doing. But we do know that the word of God says that you, out of all of our afflictions, you're going to bring us out of them. So we're just going to try to do it. We're going to wait till you answer the prayers that we have on the altar. All of us have something that we're waiting for. And what we have now, we had to wait for to get this. So we're going to keep on waiting. And we thank you, Lord, because you're the great God. You're the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the wonderful counselor. We can take our our petitions to you, and you'll hear an answer. So we thank you again, Lord's will. We'll see you again on um, on Sunday, the Lord's will. And right now, we're going to say, "May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with our Holy Spirits always." In Jesus' name. Now let the people of God say, "Amen." Amen. 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 Thank Amen. God for you. Amen. Thank God for you showing up. It was a nice, stimulating service tonight. So keep in Amen. mind what we read, and go back and read it again. And as you read, ask God to reveal things to you. Yeah? And if you fall, start falling asleep, close the Bible, go take a nap, and then come back and finish it. Okay. <laughs> All right, we thank God for you. We're going to let you go. Lord's will, we see you Sunday, if the Lord says so. Amen. Good night, everyone. Good night.